Welcome to episode 18 of Talking Prisoner. We have another amazing guest with us today. This guest appeared as a background officer in Prisoner. She's also appeared in Cop Shop, Water Rats, Blue Healers, All Saints, City Homicide, Satisfaction, It's Not You, It's Bree, The Dr. Blake Mysteries, and most recently we've seen her as Mark Brennan's boss, Senior Sergeant Christina Lake in Neighbours. Our guest is also an acting teacher and has taught students who have had roles in Frozen, The Lion King, The Sound of Music, Strictly Ballroom, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Harry Potter, and many more. We are, of course, talking about Kath Gordon, who played Officer Joanne Riley in Prisoner. Welcome to Talking Prisoner. Hello, and thank you so much for having me. Got all that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow that was quite quite the intro there well you got a lot of credits to your name so uh we couldn't I, it yeah it's probably a few more than what you mentioned yeah. but that's okay <laughs> you can drop them in during the conversation you can drop them in you know oh yeah if i can recall yeah, yeah. If I can remember. <laughs> tell us tell us about your childhood oh my gosh um I guess I knew what I wanted to do when I was eight. It all started for me at the age of eight. I was taken to a production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs at one of the main theatres in Melbourne. And I fell in love with what they were doing on the stage. And I, at the end of the show, I pointed up to the the stage and said to my mum, that's what I want to do. Can I please go to dance lessons? And it all started there. Um, it was a fabulous production of Snow White. It toured Australia for many, many, many years. And lo and behold, later on in life, I got to play Snow White in the same production, which was still touring that many years later. And I did a, an Australian tour playing Snow White. Wow. wow. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. So your, your childhood eight-year-old dreams really did come true. <laughs> um, yeah, very specifically that one, yeah. But, uh, you know, after Snow White, I was taken to see other shows, musicals mainly. Um, my father was very good friends with um, uh, one of Australia's um, top uh, producers, theatre producers, Ken Brodziak. Um, wow. and he, he produced a lot of theatre, um, straight theatre and musicals. So dad would always get comps to everything. So yeah, I was lucky enough to be exposed to a lot of live theatre at a young age. So yeah, started the dance classes at the age of eight, uh, started acting lessons also around that age. And by the age of 13, I got my first professional job, which was with the Melbourne Theatre Company. And it was a production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. I played a no neck monster, one of the uh, the kids in in that play, which um, um, obviously a, a Tennessee Williams play, and that was back in the day when um, Melbourne Theatre Company performed at St Martin's Theatre in South Yarra. Oh wow! So that was a very fine experience for me, and I got oh. to do that with my I got to do that with my brother um, Ashley, who. Uh, two years older than me he was cast as one of the kids no neck monsters as well so I got to play you know brother and sister with my brother in that okay, with, yeah. a couple okay. of, with a couple of other um actors one of which was Lisa Crittenden which uh, uh, went on to do Prisoner um so worked with her uh back in that and um yeah so very fortunate that was a huge jobs. famous play that I mean that won a lot of awards back in 1955 and was nominated for Tony Awards back in 56 when it first came out. Oh yes, no, very, very big play. <laughs> yeah, and one that you know is still being done today by yeah. all the reputable theatre companies and otherwise around the world. Yeah. Just going back to when you said you're watching Snow White with your mum, what was it that do you remember what, what it was that just attracted you to wanting to be on stage? Oh, just the performance element. I just, I, you know, it's just something that's ingrained in you, I think, from, from birth. And um, 
yeah, I just resonated with doing that as a job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Just going back to uh, to school, what were you like at school? Um, <laughs> I was a rebel. Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was a good girl in primary school, um, shy probably. Um, uh, not not I mean, not hugely shy. Uh, so yeah, um, high school I yeah I I turned into a bit of a rebel. Yeah, <laughs> um, didn't like school. I hated it. Yeah, yeah. School wasn't for me because I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew that maths and you know geometry or whatever else we were studying at school wasn't going to help me be, be you know, do, do what I wanted to do. I was going to ask you about your favourite subjects and, and the subjects you didn't like. So math you didn't like? I don't have one. No, no, no subject that I enjoyed at school, literally. Yeah, yeah. Hated sport, just wanted to get out and dance and <laughs> act and sing. Amazing. Mm. <laughs> and, and your parents, what, what were your parents doing at that time? So mum, um, uh, she worked, you know, prior to having children. Um, but once, you know, she's had myself and my brother, she was a housewife. And um, my dad was a pharmacist. He had a pharmacy in the city. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He was also the... Um, the pharmacist for the St Kilda Football Club. So oh, really? he used to, yeah, supply everything that they, the club needed. So he used to get to go to the footy as well. <laughs> oh, wow. So he became best friends with Alan Jeans, who was um, the coach of St Kilda at the time. Oh, really? Alan Jeans? Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Good. My next question was about your performance in uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Um, so yeah. we've touched on it. But what was it like getting the part for that when you first got it, being only 12 and, and becoming... Yeah, like 13, I think. But um, yeah. uh, look, um, I just remember just being very excited and just completely, you know, wowed and, like, thrilled, thrilled to be part of it. I, I used to take it all very seriously too, you know. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from just sort of sitting back and being quiet and watching, watching the the adult actors. Because you know the Martin Theatre was a small theatre, so there weren't a lot of dressing rooms. So all the women were in one. Um, it would be different these days, <laughs> you know. There'd be you know several dressing rooms in bigger venues, and a child would have a chaperone now. Um, Back then, there weren't, there was no chaperone. Even we just had to sort of, you know, get through it ourselves. But um, I used to go up and um, up onto the uh, where the stage level was and just watch scenes from the wings and watch and learn and just dream of doing, you know, that as an adult. Wow. Yeah. So you just mm. really want to learn as much as you could from all aspects of it. It's it's great. Yeah. 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 You'd learn a lot from going to the theatre as well, and which, of course, I was lucky enough to be able to do. Yeah. Mm. After school, did you want? Did you have other jobs or, or during school? Yeah. Look, I left school early. Um, I left really early. Like I think I was, uh, oh, I don't know, sixteen. I think. And yeah, I just went and got full-time jobs, um, waitressing. I worked at um, uh, Martin's Ballet Boutique for quite a while, full-time there, and just you know, all, you know, a lot of jobs, a lot of different jobs in retail, um, waitressing to pay my way, um, and you know, just waiting and waiting, hoping for auditions and to, you know, to book jobs and. I went into theatre restaurant. I did a lot of years performing in theatre restaurant. I played several of those. Draculas, I actually opened oh, with the first show that opened Draculas. Um, there was um, Nero's Fiddle out um, on Whitehorse Road. 
out in Mitcham, um, um, the one in Black Rock, um, John Hancock's Theatre Restaurant. Oh my gosh, there was Alcatraz Theatre Restaurant performed out there for a while. So I learned a lot doing all that. I um, yeah, got into a couple of musicals in my, um, was it early? No, late teens, early 20s. Yeah. It must be tough though, you know, having to have jobs while you're waiting. So you have a job and then you get an audition, you get a part and then your part's over and then you've got to go and find another job while you're waiting. Yeah. It's a tough, tough life to, to do that. Yeah, I don't know. Things sort of just fell into place. It might be tougher these days. I'm not sure, but things just fell into place back then. There were always jobs, you know, that you could get. Yeah, there were, yeah. I don't know. I never had trouble picking up jobs in between acting jobs. But theatre restaurant kept me going for a number of years and, and theatre in education, so touring schools, doing, um, doing shows for, uh, um, in, yeah, in, in schools, um, did that for a number of years. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing, yeah. Any, uh, any hobbies that you enjoy or that you have time for when you're not acting? <laughs> Um, look, I'm not a big kind of hobbyist. Um, my hobby is theatre, so I just like going to the theatre. Um, it can be pretty creative. I kind of enjoy making things from time to time. Um, gardening is always good <laughs> to sort of Therapy. ground you. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Because there are a lot of up and ups and downs in, in the industry, and I find... If I get out and get stuck into the, the garden, it really helps. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Let's let's talk about food. Do you cook? Uh, and what do you enjoy cooking? Yeah, I do cook. I'm, you know, I guess you could almost call that a hobby. I do, I mean, I get very creative with my cooking. Um, I never follow a recipe. On the odd occasion I do. And so because it's on the odd occasion, I kind of it's a bit different to follow a recipe sometimes. Um, no, I just like winging it with, with cooking. I just like going, okay, what have I got in the cupboard? What have I got in the fridge? Let's go with that. That'll go with that. And then I go shopping and I think I do the same in the supermarket and I go, yeah, do that and that. And just whatever's sort of there to produce at the time. With, you know, health consciousness in mind as well, it's, yeah, I like a healthy diet as well. I've never been able to do that with a recipe. I have to follow the recipe. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I, can never, no. I can never just grab things and put them. I don't know how people do it. I, I... Yeah. Oh, it's easy. You just trust yourself. You've got to trust yourself. Yeah. And go for it. <laughs> I think of that next time. I actually wrote a, uh, a cookbook. It's called 15 Ways to Boil Water. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that would be fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of television and, and films do you like to watch? Oh, gosh. Um, look, I like a lot of um, British drama, BBC yeah. series. Um, um, you, you just, oh, it's just the standard's so high. I just, I learn so much um, from watching yeah, incredibly well trained actors. Um, um, quite a bit of um, US stuff as well, of course. Um, yeah, that's predominantly uh, where my go to for for watching um, series as such. I mean, I do like. Um, I love Ricky Gervais's comedy, so I do love extras. I just think that's genius. I um, were you a fan was, of the original Office? You would have yeah, been, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, everything he's done and does, I just yeah, I love him. Big fan. Um, <clears throat> um, interestingly enough, I I, um, oh, I I I really loved Prison Break the series. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched. Um, I watched. Uh, the whole, all those um, seasons through all of them twice. I'm just on the edge of my seat with that one. Um, yeah, but um, Wild Side was an old, um, older um, ABC series, uh, a cop show that was produced in Australia, shot in Melbourne. That was really sort of edgy 
drama. I really liked that. Um, Utopia, again, on the ABC. It's great um, comedy. Film-wise, um, again, another prison-themed movie, um, Shawshank Redemption, so many people's favourite. <laughs> um, and I love, and one of my favourites is um, Witness as well. Witness with Harrison Ford, set in Amish country, yeah. I have actually been to Amish country in the States too, and that was, that was oh, fabulous. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Was there, yeah. Um, was there anything you binge watched during the pandemic? Oh yeah, um, lots of things really. Yeah, a lot of things. Um, I, I loved Your Honor with um, Brian Cranston. Oh, yeah. um, fantastic yeah. series. Um, Bates Motel. Yep. Yeah. Was... Um, series based on um, yeah, Psycho Hitchcock's Psycho. So well done. So so good. Watch that twice. Um, what else? Um, oh, Bodyguard was a really good series. Um, yeah, no, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I know this interview is about Prisoner, but you have a lot of credits to your name, including uh, It's Not You, It's Bree, Neighbours, uh, Water Rats, Blue Healers, and many more. Is there, is there just a few things you could touch on with those, those shows and what it was like being on those shows? Um, okay. So um, most of those shows I, I had appeared on as a guest, a guest role. So um, quite possibly most of those shows may have only been one episode. A couple of them went a little bit beyond, a, 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 you know, a couple of episodes. Um, so not a huge amount that I can touch on really, but It's Not You, It's Brie was a, a, a series where I played Brie and um, she's a sex therapist, but a really bad one. <laughs> and <laughs> um, that was on Channel 31. So that was, um, that was fun. That was fun to shoot. It's got that. some amazing write-ups that show. It's got a lot of good reviews. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had a look on Google. and Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it had some really kooky, funky themes running through it. A lot of good characters. Yeah, it was great. Series written, produced and directed by Shane Dunlop. Um, he's gone on to do bigger and better things, which is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Channel 31 yeah. did produce some good shows, actually. They... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Great platform. And yeah. Neighbours. What's it like being on Neighbours? You're on a few episodes. Um, no, great. Look, you know, I love, I just love working. So, you know, everything's um, a good experience for me when I'm acting. Um, and that was obviously quite recently. Um, you know, it was terrific to go out there as often as I did and, um play the, the senior sergeant, the, the, the woman in charge out there, <laughs> the cop shop out there. That was great. Yeah. Speaking of cop shop, your first acting credit is cop shop. Do you remember much about working on, on that? <laughs> Quite seriously, I don't even know who I was on that. Do you? You had three parts on there, actually. What, what were about the that's such a long time ago. They would have been really small roles. What were they? Do you know? I'd have to go back and look it up. Um, yeah. Um, what, what, about, what about the cast that you worked with? On Cop Shop? Mm. I, I don't remember. I really don't. Like, I've done so many small jobs, you know, so and I'm, I must have been... I must have been a kid. I just don't remember Cop Shop. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. We, we don't expect you're going to remember everything. We're, yeah. I can't remember what I did yesterday, let alone 40 years ago. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> um, Ken's next question, which I'm really curious to, uh, to listen to, which, uh, yeah. Um, yes. Can you tell us about your time at the Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute and what it was like to learn at the famous school and people that you trained with? How long were you there for? And, and for the fans that don't know who Lee Strasberg is, he is considered the father of method acting. In 1951, he became the director of the Actors Studio in New York, which was considered the nation's most prestigious acting school and in 1970, he opened 
up the Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute. So what are your memories about the school? Very special place in my heart. Very special days. I was there for um, two years full time and um, not a moment went by that I didn't just eat it all up and thoroughly enjoy it. And um, I, I originally only went over there to study for three months full time, but I just fell in love with it and just stayed another three months and then stayed a year and then stayed for a second year. Um, I worked with teachers uh, who trained directly under Lee. So it was, you know, really kind of firsthand information being passed down. It was really special and wonderful. Um, I'm still in touch with a couple of the teachers that I, I trained under, which is very special. Um, I did a little bit of training under Shelley Winters at one point in time. She was, uh, she is a met, was a method actress. Um, so she was running a workshop outside of the Institute, a method acting workshop, but I went out and did her workshop and that was an extraordinary um, experience. Uh, Cause she used to teach, I know it, she had she had some back issues so she used to have to lie down on the floor and so she used to teach from that position really? lying flat on her back on the floor yeah she's very tough she's a very tough teacher um yeah she she didn't hold back um <laughs> fine it's fair enough um but yeah getting back to the institute um made some wonderful friends and um one of which was Angelina Jolie so I trained wow. with her when she was 16, yeah. What year were you there? When did you go there? Um, gosh, so... I'm testing you now. <laughs> I think it might have been about 90, 19, okay. maybe. Yeah. Um, I think it might have been about not so long after I lost my brother. My brother um, passed away when he was 29. I was 27. Um, so yeah, um, I think it was around 1990 and, um, so I became best friends with Ange and wow. yeah, we really came, became very close. And then I, when I, you know, finished the two years full time, I didn't stay in the US, kind of ran out of money. So I came home and we stayed in contact. Um, she used to write me letters, um, but she became, um, pretty much a superstar overnight it happened very suddenly for her and as you know and she was going through marriages and divorces and everything and we just lost contact and now of course it's impossible for me to get back in touch with her but one day I do believe we will be reunited well, somehow yeah that, that, that's a very hard school to get into I mean I know they, they get thousands of yeah they take in a lot of um foreigners um from all over the world so yeah no it's um it's a very, very fine school. I love the technique. A lot of people misunderstand uh, method acting and they think it's something it's not, um, which is unfortunate, but um, I love it. And um, it works for me. It's not the only technique I use, um, but um, I use it when, I, when it's appropriate to use, when I need it and want to use it, you, you know, instinctively, it's a, it's a really good Bible. Yeah. Can I just add the, the the people that have gone to this school are Marilyn Munro, John Voigt, Sally Field, Angelina Jolly, as you said, Barbara Streisand, Bridget Fonda, Harvey Keitel. I mean, there's many, many more. Oh, there's so many more. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, you know, you just mentioned yeah. those names and you, Yeah, there's this, there's a little small there's a theaterette um within the institute in in the the uh, the Hollywood um school. Um Called they named the theatre after Marilyn Monroe, and I did a play there with Ange. Um, we did a production of a Marx Brothers play called Room Service. Oh wow! Which was a fabulous experience because Ange and I got to play. You know, um, we swapped genders, so I got to play the Chico Marx character in that, and she got to play a male role as well, but as women, as women, yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got some great photos of that. We, we, we could have shared the screen with some photos, but 
That's okay. No, send them over and I'll put them up on the uh, the Talking Prisoner Facebook page. <laughs> Fans would love them. Yeah, definitely. That's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. Now, you're also an acting teacher and have had students that have appeared in shows like Frozen, Strictly Ballroom, The Lion King, Annie, The King and I, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and way more. And, and great productions too. I've, I've seen a couple of them with my daughter. Um, what was it like? What's it like teaching students that have gone into shows like that? Oh, it's a thrill. You know, it's very rewarding to go and see those shows with you, you students up there strutting their stuff. It's great. Yeah, so they've been a, either a part of one of my classes or I've taught them privately and I coach them for the audition. And um, yeah, they've, um, yeah. A lot, a lot have gone on to have some great successes. Yeah. Are you still yeah. teaching now? Or? Yes. Yep. Yes, I, I am. Yeah. So I've recently moved up to Sydney. So I've got a whole lot of new teaching jobs up here. And I teach privately, um, predominantly online, obviously. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, but um, but online, even when we're not in lockdown. So, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. good. Yeah. 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 So I teach for a number of schools now in Sydney, which is great. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Do you actually um, prefer performing on stage or in television? I really, I know a lot of actors have a preference, but I don't. I am just happy to be doing what I love to do, whether it's in front of a camera or in front of a live audience. Um, I'm happy. I don't have a preference and I actually, I personally don't, can't really compare them. It's just a different medium. It's a different, you, you approach it differently and I just soak it all up, whatever comes my way, or whatever I manage to create, yeah. manifest. Yeah. I what's love, I your, love um, it. What's one of your favourite theatre performances you've gone to see? I've gone to see. Yeah, you've sat and watched. What's one of your all-time? Mm, I would say a number of things that I've seen, a number of shows I've seen on the West End. Yeah. Um, that's really done it for me. Um, and also on Broadway, I've seen quite a bit. But um, I've more recently been to the West End and seen some amazing shows. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I recently saw Sally Field and Bill Pullman on the West End in a play, um, All My Sons, and that was oh, incredible, just incredible. Just the, the finest work, honestly, just, yeah, more than a masterclass to watch for me. Yeah, yeah, I learned a lot. Oh, so you're still learning as you know even now you go to a uh, you, you can still learn it's, it's amazing never stop never stop yeah. no of course you always want to keep getting better and yeah expanding and trying new things and new approaches and picking up from you know yeah like right. that's why i really only watch really good stuff on tv if i can learn from it i'll watch it wow Although you can learn from stuff that's not great as well. You can learn what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I know this is a long time ago. I want to get to one of the greatest TV, well, Australian TV shows of all time, Prisoner. You appeared in 12 episodes between 1983 and 1984. How did you get the part for Joanne Riley, Officer Joanne Riley? Um, <clears throat> well... I don't know if, whether you know this or not, but I was actually originally in prisoner as a prisoner. Really? Mm -hmm. I was. Mm. <laughs> an extra. I was, I was just an extra. I don't know how many episodes I did. I couldn't tell you. It might have been a couple. It might have been a whole lot more. Uh, and then... I just remember being offered junior officer Joanne Riley. It just sort of came out of nowhere. They just, yeah, went through my agent and said, you know, am I available? Do you remember yeah. when you were an extra? Do you remember the, the 
the time, like the year or the, the episodes? Or? Well, it would have been way, I don't know. I don't even remember the time um, between the two. It couldn't have happened that soon after because they just wouldn't do that unless, unless, see, I wouldn't have had a lot of exposure as a prisoner, but I, I was there. I was there on set as a prisoner. Wow. A few times, a couple of times. No one knows Yeah. That. We didn't even know that. No. Well, <laughs> Well, I suppose extras, they don't get credited, do they? So there's kind of no record of it. But anyway, that's how it happened. And I was really thrilled, absolutely, of course, very excited. Yeah. I was very young. I mean, I might have even still been 17 when I started um, turning up as Joanne Riley. Yeah. I was very young. Yeah. Did you have to audition for that part or they just... No. Because they already knew No. You? Oh, wow. I have to, do you know what? I have to get a charger. My battery's about to die. Okay. Can you give me one sec? Sorry. No problem. <laughs> so an extra. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> breaking news. So we're breaking news, Kim. It's... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought you may not have known that. Oh, I never knew that, no. Oh, I thought it would be fun to tell you. Yeah, that's great. The fans will love that. They'll be all going back to look for the episode now. Yeah. Okay. We're all good. <laughs> right. And that was Ken's next question. Yeah. Uh, yes, you, you can continue on because we, we've, we've ascertained. Yeah, how old you were. We we're trying to work out how old you were when you first on prisoner. We thought it was 18. So. Yeah, I think, yeah, might have even started when I was 17, but I know, you know, I was, I was off and on for quite a while, I think, quite a few months. Yeah. So I was what is known as a 50-worder and or a daily. So if I had more than 50 words, I'd be put in the category of as daily or, or you know, yeah, 50-worder. Can you um can you just explain to the fans what a, a fifty worder is, just so they uh... yeah well um they count the words in the script and it sort of falls into a category of you know payment system of fifty words or more or less yeah yep. okay. yeah um had you watched Prisoner before you went on it were you a fan of yeah yeah yes yes of course yes yes loved it yeah yeah you uh, you were um originally than as you are now watching quality television. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, it was. It was. It was an amazing series that I think we all looked up to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was groundbreaking in, in many ways. It was. Um, because you were in uh, a number of episodes over a time period, there were obviously lots of drama unfolding in most episodes. Did you know anything about the storylines that were happening? Unfortunately not, no. You're not kind of really privy to, you know, um, that kind of thing with when, you, when you're playing smaller roles. You just kind of get what you're in and, yeah, you, you fit into it, yeah. Yeah, so no, not, not really, yeah. With that, you had a few smaller scenes and then there was a couple of bigger scenes, which I want to discuss uh, shortly. But did you stay around the whole day of filming just when you did your part or did you just do your part and go or you stayed on set for the whole time just to see how it was all um, learning? Uh, no, I didn't ever think that I was um, allowed to stay on set and and do any anything like that no I think once your call's over and, or, and you're wrapped you you go yeah yep. it's it yeah 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 that's my dog adding his uh, two cents worth in <laughs> the, Raymond O'Toole asks this question um was there ever any talk or discussion of your character becoming more prominent? And did you ever wish your character was a bigger, was a bigger part of scenes or episodes? Well, yes, of course I wished and hoped. And um, 
imagined it and you know saw it happening but um no there was never any discussion and I kind of always hoped that there would be but it just did not eventuate yeah mm. and I will say that is a um, common question from the fan I mean there was a lot more fans that said the same thing you know why mm. would she not have a bigger part in prisoner she well I do think that there would have been a lot of scope there for the storylines to um yeah, to develop that the, the character, being that she was a junior officer, you know. I mean, my in my own preparation, it wasn't, you know, necessarily in the character brief that I was originally given, um, but I sort of had this yearning as the character um, to aspire to the freak, you know. I used to sort of look up to her and think, I want to be like you, you know, so... <laughs> Could have been quite interesting, but yeah, yeah, it just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Mm. Are you um are you still friends with anyone from the show? No, no. no. Well, you see, I was very young, so um it it wasn't easy for me to mix with the with the women on the set really, because especially being that they're all regulars and I sort of just came and went. So I sort of just came in and just kept to myself and did my job and loved it, loved it. But, um, yeah, yeah, didn't um, really bond with anyone there. I just wasn't there enough for that to happen. Yeah. But I, I do recall everyone was always very lovely and, yeah, yeah, it was lovely. It was a lovely vibe. It was a great vibe. I kind of really do remember the green room really well and then, just walking onto set and yeah, amazing. Yeah, it was exciting. Yeah. You were in the background of a lot of scenes supervising the prisoners in the dining room. What was that like as there were always lots of people in those sorts of scenes? So was it confusing or, or you know? Um, oh gosh. Um, Oh, looking back, I think maybe at times it might have been a little bit like, well, you know, a little tad confusing, but I don't really recall it as such. Yeah, no, it was always, I knew why I was there and what I was doing and um, just, you know. And, and you would have had wonderful floor managers to guide you along the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I do remember being, um, yes, exactly. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah. Now yeah. we're really going to uh, test your memory. Do you mind if we just break down just a few of the episodes you were in just quickly? Okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> episode 347, which was written by Dave Worthington. The director was Kendall Flanagan. The cameramen were Wayne Lavender, Barry Pullen, Jeff Biggs, and I'm sure Ken was there. So that was your first episode was 347. You can be seen in the reception area when Joan Ferguson takes Maxine Daniels, which was uh, Lisa Crittenden, to use a phone. Joan is trying to distract you as Joan and Maxine are operating in a dodgy deal. So she has you going through newspapers to see they've censored anything before given to the prisoners. Yeah. What was it like doing that scene with, with uh, Maggie Kirkpatrick and Lisa? <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, it's such a long time ago, but I do remember it. I do. I um, again, like I know I keep saying this, but I was just soaking it all up, you know. Um, I was in awe of it all, really. I suppose, yeah. Um, just knowing that, you know, this is this is what I want to do, and just I want more of it. Yeah. Um, a great learning experience. Yeah. Again. Yeah, yeah. And working with Maggie would have been great. Yeah, yeah, she she was. She was lovely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. I wish yeah. I could remember it more, but it is such a long time ago. Oh, it is. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, look, I've, I've aged a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? Yeah. No, I used, so, oh, used to look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, 55, the writers were Andrew Kennedy and Billy Morton. The director was Kendall Flanagan. Mm. The studio cameramen were Wayne Lavender, Peter Hind, and I was hanging around as well. 
your next episode, uh, you next appear in episode 355 in a scene with Deputy Governor Colleen Powell when she comes into reception and asks you uh, for Ellen Farmer's file and you ask her if the rumours you've heard are true about a man being discovered and held over in isolation, to which Powell doesn't admit it is true and says she's just that that's a rumour you could afford to ignore. What about Ju Judith McGrath? Yeah. Um, look, I, I think I quite possibly worked with her more than anyone else um, on Prisoner. And um, I loved her, you know. She was, she was great. Um, um, yeah, she was great. Very strong presence and just lovely yeah very dry um, yeah 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 see again it's it it has to come back to me but yeah I, I just actually don't have any bad memories of my experience out there at all it's, it was all really great did you have any any thoughts along that storyline of, of the um, Ellen Farmer storyline? Um, well, again, you know, I I guess no, I can't remember. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, no, I just <laughs> interesting enough. Ellen Farmer was played by uh, Michael Cormick, who's a big established uh, actor yeah. in theatre. Yeah. 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 Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right, we're going to test your memory just a little bit more. It's like a game show, isn't it? We'll see him. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be doing too well. Go on. <laughs> Episode 410, and the writer was Lex Van Oss and Liddy Holloway. The director was Mark Piper, and the cameramen were Ken Mulholland, Wayne Lavender, and Peter. Is it Peter Bowley? Sorry. Bowley. Bowley. Peter Bowley. Sorry. Bully. So your next appearance is in episode 410, where you take Sonia Stevens to Mrs. Reynolds' office. Uh, Sonia Stevens, which was played by Tina Bursell, who of course has just been in the uh, the new Wentworth as Eve Wilder. Do you have any memories working with Tina? Um, no. No? <laughs> I, rem I, rem I mean, I remember her in the role. Um, Again, you know, I mean, I was just finding my feet back then. Had I been older, I would probably have been able to, you know, um, work with them more closely. But because I was young, I just, you know, yeah, kept quiet and just went in and did my job. And observe. Yeah, observe. yeah, and yeah. Learn. a real sort of bystander, really, um, mm -hmm. finding my feet, I guess. And have you watched uh, the new Wentworth? Yeah, yeah, a, a bits and pieces, to be honest. Um, and I have been very impressed. Yeah. You like um, it? I did, I did get offered a role on that. Um, oh, really? But yeah, it was a small role. Um, I, I had to um, turn it down, though, because I was required to shave my head and I wasn't prepared to do that. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Interesting. Gee, that's a big. Uh... Had it have been a big role, I would have done it, but not for a small role. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing they wanted you to play a prisoner with a shaved head. No, I don't know. I don't know. I think it had something to do with a cancer um, um, patient. I think it was going to be Sigrid Thornton was going to have to shave it in a scene. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. So I kind of said, I just said no to that. <laughs> um, episode 4, 419 and the writer was Wendy Jackson directed by Kendall Flanagan cameramen were Ken Mulholland Wayne Lavender and Barry Pullen so this is an episode in the uh, sorry the rec room where the prisoners are refusing to eat and you're working with uh, Joy Westmore who played Joyce Barry do you remember any, anything about yeah. Joy Westmore that you can tell us yeah who, actually uh, I have I, I have had a little bit to do with Joy um, if, if there was anyone that I've sort of come across and 
um, since then, I had come across Joy a number of times, just seen her around the traps. I, I, I'm pretty sure I had worked with her a couple of times since then, but don't ask me what that was on. But I, I, I yeah, I do, I do remember seeing Joy quite, a, quite often around the traps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She had a lot of background too, as um, appearing on in Melbourne tonight in in before Prisoner and, and so forth and yeah, so on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, she's um she's beautiful, wonderful person. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah. I think she even yeah. had a part on Neighbours at some stage too. She was on. I'm Neighbors. sure, yeah. like everyone has. Yeah, I think <laughs> all of us. <laughs> yeah. There's questions about Sheila Florence because we asked everybody um, what they thought about Sheila Florence and everybody comes back with a different kind of question, answer, you know, because um, they all have various memories of, of mm. Sheila. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sheila just iconic, really. Um, I used to just... I mean, I guess my memories of her were mainly in the green room um, and on set. Yeah. Um, mm, just look to her in awe, really. Yeah, very powerful presence and fantastic character and oh, incredible, yeah. incredible to be in her presence, just in her orbit. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm. Um, on a Sorry, cut out then. Honoured. Okay. Yeah. Honoured. You get it? Yeah. yeah. Um, episode 456, another one that you're in, which is one I just watched recently. The writers was Chris Milne and Betty Quinn, directed by Julian McSweeney, cameraman Ken Mulholland, Wayne Lavender, yeah. and Peter Hind. So you're at... Um, Colleen Powell's leaving and there's a party at Ann Reynolds' house and you're there with uh, Colin Marshall. Yeah. Joyce has had a few to drink. Paul Jones trying to talk to all the guests and, and make friends, but no one wants anything to do with her. It was a great scene with you and uh, you look totally different out of uniform and your hair out. Do you remember much about that one? <laughs> yeah. I do. I do, actually. I can I remember exactly what I was wearing. and I do. Um, because I guess I had a little bit more to do in that scene, so it's it's yeah, yeah. it's it's really stuck with me that one. Um, again, because you know I was sort of conversing with um, um, the 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 freak a little bit there at that party. I was sort of just trying to sort of yeah, look up to her and um, yeah, it was it was quite quite interesting to to sort of um, play with the. What that what my character was like outside of the prison at a party, you know. She I started to play her quite quite differently. Yeah, different side to her, quite bubbly. Yeah, it was interesting watching that. <laughs> yeah. Two different people from the offices that you were, yeah, outside of the outside of the prison. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice it to fun. see that you were able at that stage of the game to be to be approach that character in a different way yeah yeah oh well you know another chance to sort of show um a different side a different um layer yeah absolutely um yeah episode 491 the writers were ian coglin and faye russo the director was Kendall Flanagan. The studio cameramen were Wayne Lavender, Malcolm Daff, good old Daffy, and myself. In this episode, Luke Kelly takes Joyce Barry hostage in solitary to escape. You are sitting at reception when they come in. Lou orders you up from the desk and warns you not to hit the alarm or she'll kill Joyce. She then knocks you out and gets Joyce to tie you up. When you come around, uh, you work your way over to the desk, still tied up, and eventually manage to hit the alarm. What was it like filming that scene with Louise Siverson and getting knocked out by her? 
it was a great scene and, and very good yeah. acting. Ah. Um, yeah, I do remember this one. <laughs> um, well, um, they put padding on the back of my um, neck and shoulders here um, under my uniform. Um, and I was quite concerned that it looked really kind of obvious, to be honest, but um, I think we got away with it. Uh, yeah, no, so um, I think that we had um, someone advising us as, as far as I can recall as to, um, you know, exactly where she's to hit me. It was she hit me with a gun, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I was instructed as to how to, you know, take the impact and then fall. Um, yeah, that was um, a more dramatic scene. Yeah, a good, good, good moment for me. Yeah, it was a great scene. Did you think at that I a, time... I had, a, that, I had a handful of... Did you think at that time that you were going to get some bigger parts after shooting a scene like that? It was a, it was a really heavy scene. <laughs> Yes, I had. I was. I definitely hoped that it was starting to build. You know, I mean, always. You know, that's like, oh, good, 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 good. A bit more, surely, surely, surely. But you know, had had I had played that part when I was older, then I would have been able to possibly, you know, talk to the 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 the, the right people, the creatives to in in you know, or have my agent you know do it for me um I would have known how to sort of you know discuss that what the prospects might be um to develop the character but again being 17 18 I just yeah, had to just you know allow it to unfold the way it was going to unfold yeah yeah, yeah. episode 491 writers were Ian Coglin and Faye Russo the director was Kendall Flanagan. The studio cameramen were Wayne Lavender, Malcolm Daff, and myself. In this episode, Lou Kelly takes Joyce Barry hostage in solitary to escape. You are sitting at reception when they come in. Lou orders you up from the desk and warns you not to hit the alarm or she'll kill Joyce. She then knocks you out and gets Joyce to tie you up. When you come around, you work, you work your way over to the desk still tied up and eventually managed to hit the alarm. What was it like filming that scene with Louise Siverson and getting knocked out by her? Great scene and brilliant acting by you. Oh, oh, thank you. Gee, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I do remember this scene. I remember this one well. Um, uh, um, quite a powerful scene to play, um, probably a real step up for me to, um, you know, have some more, something more substantial to yeah. work on and with. Um, I do remember there was a, must have been a fight coordinator or someone on set there um, um, who did advise um, us how to go about, um, you know, where to hit and how to take the impact and how to fall. Um, that I was, I had padding put across the back of my neck and shoulders under my uniform to take, you know, the um, the brunt of the of the impact there. Um, so it didn't hurt. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Obviously, at all, um, but um, just enough to feel it, and um, yeah. Um, I was thrilled to have something more dramatic to work with. But yeah, that scene did definitely leave an impression with me. Yes. I was hoping that it was, you know, a sign of more to come, but it didn't, didn't, not meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so getting on to episode 493, which is your last episode, the writers were Chris Milne and Alistair Webb. The directors were Colin Buds. And the cameramen were Peter Hind, Wayne Lavender, David Triscott, and I'm sure Ken was on this one. So this is your last episode as Officer Riley. You're telling uh, the cook, Ray Proctor, that Mrs. Reynolds wants to see him. So obviously it wasn't your choice uh, that you were leaving prison. It was just that was it. There was no more. No, look, what happened was, um, you know, I'd go for certain periods of time where I wasn't, you know, booked 
Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden I'd be booked again. So I just kind of thought, oh, well, it's just another time lapse. But then, you know, they just never, yeah, I just never got rebooked. And, you know, that was the end of that. Yeah. Well, you didn't know that was going to be your last episode. No, oh, no, okay. no, no. Yeah. yeah. They just obviously went in different, different ways. Yeah. Did you, Which keep, is, watching, you, know, did you keep watching sorry? it after that? Did you keep watching oh, it after that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, we'll shoot over the fan questions, Ken. Yes, some fan questions. Well, this isn't, these are a lot of them are very much fan statements. Mm. Bonnie Davis Chiaccio says, You guys are just getting win after win. <laughs> oh, bit of a pat on the back there. Thank you. I can't wait to reward, uh, to re watch these after I've seen them all. Um, Natalie Robin said, you're a very, very pretty lady. And that's shared by a lot of other fans as well. Oh, thank you. That's so lovely. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Sam Owen also says, which actress, actor did you enjoy working with the most? And do you have any funny behind the scenes stories that spring to mind? Oh, uh, um, Gosh, who did I enjoy um, working with the most? Um, oh, look, there, I don't think anyone really stands out. I think across the board, just well, the, the, so many of them were just so super strong. Um, um, maybe Maggie Kirkpatrick, I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I you know, I had a fair bit to do with her, so I, yeah, that that um, yeah, was, she's she's amazing. Yeah, she is. Sure is. Mm. So the the next question is from Mark Harry. Now I'm I'm a little bit confused. It must have been a scene that you filmed on prison, but it said, did you ever get approached by passers by during the picket scenes, thinking it was a protest against Grundy's? So there must have been <laughs> a, a picket scene at the front of the. Well, I, I don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. Do? yeah, I do. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no. I um, I don't think there were any onlookers at the time. I think it was all sort of behind closed fences. Yep. It was like like you know on the back lot. Where was it? Um, wasn't it out in um? Where did we shoot it? Not a way. Um, no. Yeah. 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 Fremantle, yeah, where Fremantle is now, yeah, yeah. David Grant has one simple thing to say. Mm. You were excellent on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, that is so lovely. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, John Walters, so we've already really touched on his questions, but it's <clears throat> more of a statement as well one of my crushes gosh she is beautiful anyway i would love if she can be asked about being tied up like a kidnapper by a mad lou and being at the party when colleen accidentally spilled champagne over a not amused joan if you do mention my question please tell her i said she is gorgeous thank you talking prisoner lads oh, isn't that lovely yeah thank you um yeah, well, we kind of covered those yeah, no, already. We covered that. Yeah, it's more of a statement. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. lovely. Mickey C or Key says fans should check out Kath's show reel. This lady can act. It's a real shame she didn't get to play a bigger role in Prisoner. And that's a comment shared by a lot of fans. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, I can't tell you how much I would have adored to um, do more. Yeah. Which is also Darren Hembro's uh, comment is would love to have Kath Moore in prisoner character become more mainstream. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. From, the, fans. from the fans' ears to, or mouths to God's ears, the <laughs> <laughs> of the future. <laughs> Max Dweeb also says, did they ever want to expand on Officer Riley's backstory? Did Kath audition for any other part in Prisoner? And who did Kath hang out with in the green room um, 
and that's from, um, I think that was from Matt from the UK as well. Wow. Yeah, well, I guess we covered those. Um, I do Again, actually remember hanging out with Joy, actually. Joy was small quite a bit. She was, she was very warm and open and friendly, but extremely. So, yeah, yeah, I do remember always having a chat with her. She's gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. And, the, and the green room actually uh, wasn't probably by the time you were appearing, wasn't down in the tunnel by that time when they finally thought that prisoner was going to be continuing <laughs> for a long time, they actually built a green, green room outside of Studio B. Ah. Right. So that's probably, you, you may have been, when you were there as an extra, as a prisoner very early on, it would have been the tunnel, mm. but by the time um, that you then appeared as officer, as, as Officer Riley, um, that green room was actually built outside of Studio B. Gee, okay. I remember it being within the whole sort of studio building. Yeah. I don't remember it being outside as a separate building. You, you actually, no, it wasn't outside. It was still yeah. in the studio. You just right. you walked out of Studio B and then across a corridor and you yeah. were in... That's it, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Mm. yeah. And often we would, I would go and wander in there when I had a scene off and, and see people playing uh, Trivial Pursuit and um, making phone ah. calls and doing knitting and crocheting and reading right. magazines, all that sort of thing. Ah, now it's coming back to me, <laughs> yes, that's right, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this is probably more of a statement or for the fans that want some closure on Officer Riley. So Cole Taylor said, Officer Riley just disappears. What does Kath think happened to the character? I think she was promoted to governor of another prison. <laughs> oh, that would have been nice if it was, an, if it was another spin-off. Yeah, they yeah. said Barnhurst or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, oh, I, oh, no, I've never had a thought as to what would have happened to her. I think I just went on to the next job, you know, and I couldn't even tell you what that was. You know, it might have been, you know, theatre or something. I just, you just keep going, keep moving on. Well, Steve Bellamy says, tell her I think she is one of the finest actresses in Australia and I am a great admirer of her work. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. That's Again, lovely. that's another common uh, statement from a lot of fans. We just didn't put them all in because they're obviously, yeah. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> um, is there anything that you're currently working on at the moment that you could share with the fans? Um, look, I am getting a lot of auditions at the moment, which has been fantastic. Um, I'm, well, I have, I have nothing concrete as yet. Um, I have just this morning come off a, a film set as a, a commercial shoot, shooting an epic television commercial, which was um, brilliant um, to be part of. Um, had to travel out of Sydney for a couple of days for that. Just got back in this morning. So that's um, the most recent thing I've done. Uh, <laughs> finished late last night. Um, I've got a call back for something to, uh, next week and um, that's uh, some theatre and um, I got very, very close to something huge um, a couple of weeks ago and I got, yeah, got very close, but sadly, again, hasn't gone my way. So just, yeah, I, I hope to have some really good news soon with something oh. yeah fantastic yeah yeah well that was episode 18 of talking prisoner thank you for coming on to talk with us and the fans and thank you to the fans for watching please subscribe to our youtube channel and share our videos where you can please like our facebook page this episode of talking prisoner is also available across all podcast forums including google podcasts apple spotify iheart and the rest of them 
And it's also on the talkingprisoner.com website. Thank you so much, Kath Gordon. Oh, thank you, guys. And thank you to all the fans for your wonderful questions and absolutely beautiful, supportive comments. That's really, you know, absolutely wonderful and beautiful. Um, and to you, Matt and Ken, thank you so much for having me on. And congratulations to you both for doing what you're doing. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good to see you. You too. And we'll see you soon. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye, everyone. See ya. Bye.